folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast coming to you from our top secret broadcast compound. Right here in the, let's see, what are we, the west side of Festus, Missouri, 63028. But don't try to find us because you never will. Anyway, good to be with you this morning. God laid something on my heart today, and I'm going to be able to share, I want to share some things out of the Word of God today. Uh, we're going to, if you want to get your Bibles real quick, we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 14, the whole chapter. Uh, there is just a burden on my heart today for our country and for, for what's going on. And I want to get through some news items real quick. I, I want to deal with, uh, uh, you've heard about what's going on in Montana. This, this, the city has hired a, uh, a private police force. Uh, to police them. And uh, we're going to talk, because there's something really interesting about this, and we're going to talk about it. First day off, a uh, article from Newsday.com, mandatory flu vaccination splits workers. And I'm just going to deal with this very quickly. Out in, out in New York, the state of New York said everybody that works in health care has to get a swine flu shot. The health care workers walked out in the streets and held signs up and said, no, we're not. We're not getting a flu shot. We don't, we'd, we'd rather take our chances with the flu. We take care of ourselves and we're not worried about it, but you're definitely not going to give us a swine flu vaccine that we don't know what, how good it is. And I applaud them for that. I want to tell you something. I have never in my life seen a time when more people are taking to this. It seems like every time the government does something, I mean, here come people out in the streets saying, oh, no, we're not. We're not going to do it. Uh, I will tell you, I, my nephew, my nephew came down with what they think was the swine flu. He wasn't vaccinated. He lived. I think that there are worse things. I think there are worse things than taking some of that. I don't, I don't know about all vaccines. And some of you are going, oh. But I'm telling you, I'm not getting a swine flu shot. Still not, and I don't recommend you do it either. Uh, Sunstein, this is from World Net Daily. Sunstein, government must fund abortion. We have to kill the babies, he said. This is Cass Sunstein. This is the Obama administration's regulatory czar who says the government should be required to fund abortion in cases such as rape or incest. He said, I've argued that the Constitution forbids government from refusing to pay the expenses of abortion in cases of rape or incest, at least if government pays for childbirth in such cases. Sunstein wrote in his 1993 book, The Partial Constitution. You know, I've read the Constitution. I, I remember learning the Constitution in high school, and I don't remember one word about the government has to pay to kill babies. I mean, I... I, I just don't get it. But these are some of the guys that like to rewrite the Constitution. This is the kind of, I don't know, this kind of people, you're going to see in a minute, this kind of people we had coming. And we've, we've had this coming. We've had guys like this and, uh, and, uh, and Kevin Jennings, and I, I've talked about him. We've had guys like this and Obama coming. We've, we've had it coming for a long time in this country. We absolutely have. We are getting what we deserve in this country. And, and I know a lot of people complaining. I don't like it, but I can tell you that we're getting what we... In fact, it's going to get worse. And I don't say that to say, oh my goodness, maybe we should take to the streets and shoot people or shoot the government. I'm not saying that because that is definitely not the answer. But I will tell you what the answer is when we get to Ezekiel chapter 14. Uh, here's another one of Obama's Caesars. Safe schools chief encouraged child sex with older men. I could not believe this. Kevin Jennings, the radical homosexual activist who founded one of the biggest organizations in the nation to promote gay activities in public schools, needs to come clean, according to the Washington Times. A teacher was told by a 15-year-old high school sophomore that he was having homosexual sex with an older man. At the very least, statutory rape occurred. Fox News reported that the teacher violated a state law requiring that he report the abuse. That for, former teacher Kevin Jennings is President Obama's safe school czar. Clearly, the process for vetting White House employees has broken down, the Times editorial board said. In this one case in which Mr. Jennings had a real chance to protect a young boy from a sexual predator, he not only failed to do what the law required, but actually encouraged the relationship. Fox News since then has written about Jennings' agenda, and now the Washington Times says, quote, the White House should force Mr. Jennings to come clean. The editorial cited Jennings' statement that in the case of the 15-year-old, there wasn't any evidence he knew uh, the student was involved in sex with the older man. But the Fox 
report uncovered an audio tape contradicting that assertion and indicates Jennings told the student to make sure to, quote, use a condom in his activities, unquote. Jennings has not admitted that he made mistakes and that he now refuses to answer any questions about the scandal, encouraging and covering up man-boy sexual activity for serious offenses. According to the Americans for Truth website run by Peter LaBarbera, the incident involving the 15-year-old was just one of among a series of egregious behaviors by Jennings. Another incident was the Fistgate scandal in which he led discussions at a seminar where young teens were guided on how to perform da dangerous homosexual perversions. I'm going to I'm going to stop I'm going to stop reading right there. Uh, that is just this is this is the guy in charge of safe schools. The wolf guarding the sheep. And, uh, but of course, it's not Obama. I mean, we have to go along with this because, you know, Obama's, he's the Messiah. He's God. Uh, you've seen these videos uh, on YouTube. Uh, these people chanting to Obama, deliver us Obama, deliver us Obama. These community organizers praying to Obama, being led in a prayer to President Obama. School kids chanting Barack Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, and then mirroring what the, and one of my favorite songs in Christianity was Jesus Loves the Little Children, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Well, these kids turned it around. Of course, it's not these kids. It was the teachers turned it around to say red and yellow, black and white. We are equal in his sight. That's the Obama that is a, uh, this uh, social justice guy. And of course, you know Obama. I mean, he was, he was pictorialized by an artist as being the Messiah. Boy, oh boy, I tell you what. It's getting awfully dark outside, isn't it? I mean, winter's coming around, but the darkness over this country just keeps growing and growing and growing. Here's, an, here's a story that when I first saw it, I wasn't going to buy it for a second. I, I, I want you to know that I, I try to be skeptical on some of this stuff. Um, I've been watching prophecy videos for a long time. I've been watching guys who were supposedly from the government saying, you know, boy, they saw black helicopters and I mean, there's been people, I mean, all, all this stuff. Now, I, I know about Ruby Ridge. I know about Waco. I know about things like that. And terrible, terrible things have happened in our country. Uh, but one of the things that we don't want to do is to invent our enemy. We don't want to do that. If our enemy is going to make a move, then it's our job to watch if the enemy makes a move and then to warn people. But to warn them prematurely or to warn them based upon false ideas and false evidence, uh, I think is a tragedy. I think it's terrible. Uh, I think that there are people out there who actually want there to be military patrols in the streets so they can say, see, I told you so. Uh, let's get our guns. I, I, actually, I mean, I met a guy. You think I, I met a guy that I knew at, a tea, at the tea party here in St. Louis. And this guy scares me because he's got his guns loaded, sitting by the windows. He's ready for it. And I'll be honest with you, I, I'm just not that eager I mean, I want America saved, don't get me wrong, but I'm just not that eager uh, to see a civil war in our country. Well, this story breaks. American Police Force Corporation takes over small town police, uh, small town police force, and prisoner less jail. This is uh, Neil Katz. I think this is CBSnews.com. And so, you know, you may not like CBS. You probably can't stand Katie Couric, but. Uh, at least they're going to report news that is believable, okay? Uh, not like some other websites that dream this stuff up and put it out there. I want to tell you something. Be careful about what you're watching on YouTube and be careful about some of these end times militia, right-wing patriot websites because I think sometimes, uh, I, I can, I, I, let me say this, I can invent a story this afternoon, put up a little video blog on it somewhere and in, in a week, people would be picking up on this and going, oh my goodness, look what's happening. 
in, I, I think, some cases made up. And, and I, I tell you, I'm, I don't know exactly. See, there's some things about this thing that trouble me. I don't know if you've seen this. The American Police Force Corporation. This is a company now. In fact, here, here's what's happening. In Hardin, Hardin Montana, apparently the, this is a really small town in Montana, and about 3,500 people, and then outlying areas. And um, they built a prison out there. And I'm trying to get all this right. They built a prison out there and a 450-bed prison out there that they can't get any prisoners to come to. Uh, they thought that they would maybe be a contract prison for some of these overcrowded ones, and they would send them, you know, like California, you know, would send some of their prisoners over there, but uh, they couldn't get any takers. So in comes this company called the American Police Force Corporation. Now I'm going to show you their website here in a second. Uh, but anyway, they, they, supposedly they strike a deal with, with the city of Hardin, Montana, and uh, they're going to take over this prison, and uh, they're going to take over some of the, the, the police force in Hardin that doesn't exist. Okay, All of a sudden, according to several reports that I saw, all of a sudden, uh, these SUVs come in that are black and they have the Hardin Sheriff's Department or something like that on there. Anyway, it is a company called the American Police Force. Now, here's, here's some things that are, that are troubling to me. American Police Force actually gives, they have a website, and when I first started going to it, I could click on anything on there, and then apparently the story started getting out, and I mean, that it must have overloaded their server. But anyway, one of the things about the American Police Force is that they list an address in California that uh, is something, I don't remember what it was, but it's something other than the Hardin Police Force Corporation. Uh, they must be sharing an awful big office. and I, I, So I don't understand that. I, I, don't know if this is, I don't know if this is a hoax or a cover-up. I don't know yet. Um, but anyway, so if you live in Hard Montana and you watch this, uh, give me a call or send me an email. Let me know what's going on, all right? Uh, if you don't live in Hard Montana and don't send me an email saying, well, I know somebody or I saw this on YouTube. Um, but anyway, um, I, I, this, this company troubles me because uh, in some of the reports that I read, it has a parent company, but nobody can identify the parent company. Now, there are possibilities. Number one, um, the, one of the bloggers that I read said that, you know, this is kind of typical for private security companies in that they remain secretive and private is part of what they do. Okay, I, can, I guess I can buy that. The other part of this may be is that they are some sort of front organization. I don't know. Uh, the more you look into them, the less you find out about them. And so I'm just kind of troubled by this. But one of the things that really just jumped out at me was I went to, and I appreciate the watchers that sent me this. I would probably would have never seen it had it not been for you guys. And in fact, I think two or three people sent me this, and I appreciate it because I went to their website. And uh, I want you to know that, um, you know, I'm starting to get, I, believe it or not, I'm starting to get a lot of emails. And uh, sometimes it's hard to catch up on everything. And uh, I think I am like ADD. I think I have attention deficit uh, disorder. Or as somebody said ADOS. And I said, what is that? They said attention deficit. Ooh, shiny. Okay, I think, you know, because if something doesn't just immediately jump out and catch my attention, or the Holy Ghost doesn't say, hey, hey, Mike, hey, take a look at this. And so the other day I clicked on this email and I scan it for like five seconds. And if something doesn't jump out at me, I, you know, I, I keep it in the archive and I can search for it later uh, if I think about it. But anyway, I, I think there's the Holy Ghost is saying, hey, Mike, take a look at this. So I click on the link and I go to the website and wow. Uh, was I amazed at what I saw? The American Police Force Corporation. Look at their logo. Now I'm going to put their logo up next to their logo. This is the logo for the 33rd degree of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Ordo Ab Keo. You know, you've seen that in some of my videos before. Ordo, Ordo Ab Keo. Um, order out of chaos. And they are using this logo. In fact, I, I want to break down their logo for you uh, here on this broadcast. I'm going to show you what it means. Number one, look at the very top there. Look at the crown. Okay, The crown 
is a, uh, is a symbol for the Antichrist. I mean, let's just get down to it. The crown is a symbol for the Antichrist. If you were to look in, uh, the Antichrist is a king. He has power over the earth. But if you look in, uh, in Revelation chapter 9, when the, when the bottomless pit is open, this demonic horde comes flying out, the, scorp the scorpion guys, and they all have crowns upon their head. God is, God is giving them authority over the earth. Now, Christ died to abolish that authority. That's why he had a crown of thorns on his head. He is, he is taking, he is destroying his enemies on the cross. That's what the symbolism is. Uh, and then you look at the American Police Force logo, the double ego. The double eagle. Now, it took me a long time to figure this one out, but I was reading Morals and Dogma one time from Albert Pike, and he basically explained it. The, the two eagle heads joined together in one body. That is the fusion of opposites. That is one facing one way, one facing the other way. They are fused together in the same body. Uh, you've seen our video on um, the mother of all secrets or the secret of Solomon's key revealed, uh, the triple helix, where I explain the symbolism, the sons of God, daughters of men, or Daniel chapter 2, if you prefer, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. They're going to be the, the, the union, Albert Pike explains, the double-headed eagle represents the union of the divine with the human. Okay, so that's, that's Daniel chapter 2. That fourth kingdom actually uniting itself in one body in humanity. It's like the ultimate form of demon possession. Uh, then you look down at the bottom of the American Police Force logo. You have the fleur de lis. If you've seen our video on the triple helix, you'll understand what the fleur de lis represents. You may have seen that in the Da Vinci Code. The Priory of Zion uses that symbol. It is a symbol for three-strand DNA. Now, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I, I, I don't know what to say about. There's a lot of things I could say, but I, here's what I want to say. When I see something like this, immediately I, I just go, okay, there's something up with this. God has, over the years, he's taught me Assembles. He's taught me numbers. He's taught me to see things for what they really are through the pages of the Bible. And I see things like this and it troubles me. It troubles me for the fact that no one knows who these people are. No one can dig up right now who owns this company, where they're getting their money from, how, how, what are they doing. I mean, there's just so many things that we don't know about this. And then all of a sudden they show up with this logo and, 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 and some people might be saying, see, it's the Freemasons. They're trying to destroy America. This is bigger than the guy that you know that's in the lodge down the street, okay? Trust me on this one. This is actually the evolution of mankind or the de-evolution of mankind. And uh, I would say let, let's be watchers now in this situation. Let's not act. Let's be watchers because I think something like this, I, I don't know. I think we ought to be patient. And I think we ought to wait. But let's be watchers on this thing. Uh, incidentally, there is a... Uh, a related website to this, another defense company, Allied Defense Systems, if you look at their logo, you have basically the image of, a, of an unfinished pyramid with the enlightened eye over it, just like you do on the back of a $1 bill. And, and so I, I, you know, I, I just think that, uh, I think that something could be going on here. So I think this is worthy of our attention and our watch. And if you see something that you think is relevant to this, Send it to me, and I'm telling you, if you want me to look at it in an email, catch my attention with it, all right? Uh, so anyway, I, I was preparing for the broadcast this morning, and uh, God, I believe, nudged me to turn to Ezekiel chapter 14, and I want to go through this real quickly uh, with you on the broadcast this morning, and I, I want to deal with... Um, uh, just what, I don't know, we're going to let the Word of God speak and let the Word of God deal with us uh, on the Watchman broadcast this morning about some, some things that I clearly see going on in our country. I hope you have your Bible because I'm not going to put a bump on the screen. Let's just read the Word of God, Ezekiel chapter 14. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, and the Word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I want you to get this now because God will give us a spirit of discernment. He will give us a spirit of discernment. The Word of God, the Bible, the Bible will give us a spirit. Of, you'll, the more of the Bible you read, the more you're able to figure things out. Okay, And uh, the Word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their heart. Now that's dangerous. I mean, it's one thing to you know go into a church and there's... Uh, uh, you know, a Jesus and a Mary and a Joseph and a St. Paul and with little halo sun images on their head and, and you do all, I mean, that's one thing. 
It's one thing to have a little Buddha incense in your burner in your house. Or you know how some ladies, they like to decorate their house with these little winged female angels, which I don't believe in. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, there's probably something worse than having an idol in your church or your house. And that's having one in your heart. You see, here, here's what I'm getting at. You can have an idol somewhere outside and, and uh, that's wrong. But to have an idol inside of your heart basically means that secretly you're worshiping another God, but on the outside it looks like you're cool with Jesus. I mean, that's, 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 that's what it is. These elders came to Ezekiel and God was giving him discernment, just like Jesus had discernment when he was, I mean, he, he knew their heart. And God reveals the hearts of people to us. And God is saying, Ezekiel, these guys, have I, they're idol worshipers. And Ezekiel might have said, well, I, don't, I haven't seen them. And God said, they're in their heart. That's dangerous. Because they have carved out an image of God that is not the God of this Bible. And so anyway, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? You know what God's saying? They, they're going to ask, but I'm not going to tell them anything. And uh, so verse 4, Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, which today is the word of God, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. You have to ask the question, why is our government in the shape that it's in? A deeper question than that is, why is the church in the shape that it's in? Why is there so much false doctrine now? Why, is there, why are there so many Bible translations? I'm going to explain that. The condition of the country hinges upon the condition of the church. I'm a firm believer in that. The church goes bad, there goes the country. No doubt in my mind about it. And uh, so we have one question answered, but the other question is, wh why are pastors and preachers and deacons and church people, why is everything going bad all of a sudden? Why, why is that happening? And I can tell you it's because they have idols hidden in their heart. They have the stumbling block of iniquity inside of their heart. Oh, on the outside they look good. On the outside they look spiritual. These, they may wear robes. They may wear nice ties. They may wear the, uh, the, the, the cool, they may have the cool shirt untucked look when they, and their hair gelled all messed up when they come out on the stage and their, little, and their little wire microphone sticking down the side of their face. And they might look all hip out there and everybody's, oh, that's cool. But God said they have idols in their heart and that's what's wrong with them. And he said, as long as they're like that, as long as, I'll say this, as long as you and I are like that, God says, I'm not showing them anything from the Bible. I'm, I'm going to let them, and why are there so many Bibles? Because so many church people want other Bibles. They do not want the unchangeable Word of God in the King James Bible. They don't want it. And the fact that they have idols and the stumbling block of iniquity in their heart is God's way of saying, you know, we can, we, we can, in other words, we can see the spiritual condition of people. I believe this. We can see the spiritual condition of people by the straying away from the true faith and the true doctrines of the faith that are inherent in all these churches right now. And, and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse as time goes on. You will see the Rick Warren crowd and everybody else, and they're already moving this way. You're going to see them embracing homosexuality. You're, that's what you're going to see. And probably worse things that you and I cannot sit here right now and dream up. And God says the reason being is, is that I've, I've, I've hidden the word from them. They, they, they go to Bible college and they learn how to read Greek and Hebrew and they do all that stuff and they're very smart, very intelligent. But they decided a long time ago there was mistakes in the Bibles and they have idols in their heart and they have the stumbling block of their iniquity in their heart. And God said they can ask, but I'm not going to give them an answer. I'm going to let them be led astray. Here's how God does this. Because there's a, there's a verse here coming up that if you don't understand God, you don't understand the Bible, it won't make sense to you. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, verse 5, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. Um, 
God says, I'm going to catch them. I'm going to catch them. Because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, repent. Oh my goodness. If there was ever, if there was ever a, a message that needs to go out from the watchman on the wall, and that is we see the sword coming, and we turn around and say, Hey, the sword's coming. And I don't think we can win this battle. I think it's probably better that we repent. The message of repentance. Remember, God's going to prepare the way of His coming with the message of repentance. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel which separated himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man. And I want to tell you something. If there's something that, that scares me, is that God would turn his face away from me. That's, that scares me. I want to know the truth. Number one, to preach it to people who want to know the truth. But I want to know the truth for me. I, I desire, I starve for things that are true. I want the truth in my life. And I never, and I've begged God, I've begged God probably a million times if I've done it once. God, please, don't ever lead me astray or let me be led astray. I'm not saying that because I prayed that naturally everything I say is right. I mean, come on. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I, I just ask God, God, and if it takes time, then it takes time. But God, you know, I told you my testimony about going to the Pentecostal church, and they slapped me on the head, and I, I mean, I didn't fall. I, I didn't fall backward. And, and right after that, I said, God, thank you. Don't let me be led astray. Don't let me believe men that aren't telling the truth. I only trust one thing in this world, and that's the King James Bible, and I will not trust anybody or anything else, ever. And so I don't want God, it just scares me, I, I don't want God to set His face against me. And God says, I will make Him a sign in a proverb, and I will cut Him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. I want to tell you something, my, my parents had a way of letting me know who was in charge. They got pretty mean about it sometimes. Every now and then, i got to put my foot down in my house, and, and I'm not a dictator by any means. I try to be so gentle with my wife and my kids, but every now and then, I had enough, and I just say, you know what, we're not going to do this. And you're going to know that I'm dad. Every now and then, I have to do it as pastor here. These are good people, but every now and then, i got to stand up and say, you know what, that's not right, and we're not going to do this. God said, you shall know that I am the Lord. I wasn't kidding. And he said, verse 9, If the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Now, I want you to understand, you have to take here a little and there a little. You can't just say, well, God said he told a lie. No, that's not what he said. Okay? And here's how God operates. You remember in the days of Ahab. Ahab uh, was, uh, I mean, he was being Ahab. There's no doubt about it. And God said, uh, He's up in the councils of heaven, and there is an old dirty devil up there. And, um, and, and he's, got the, he's got the multitude of angels around him. And God says, uh, uh, Who can I send to be a lying spirit in the, in the mouth of the prophets to Ahab? And you can just imagine there were some of those devils going, Oh, oh, pick, pick me, pick me, oh, 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 oh. And all of a sudden, one jumps up and says, I can handle that one. I'm pretty good at it. Okay? And God said, okay, here's what I want you to do. And God told him what to do. See, God's in charge of even the devils, okay? So, I mean, this spirit goes down. All the prophets, all the prophets tell Ahab, well, of course you're going to win the battle. Of course you are. I mean, you're, you're Ahab. Uh, God, God told us that. God told us, Ahab, that you can have wealth and prosperity. God told us that. And that's how God operates. In verse 10, And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even, even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. In other words, preachers, you're going to stand in the same judgment line as the people you preach to. You better have things right. 
Because when God floods this country with, the, with what I'm going to read you here in a little bit, it's going to affect everybody, except a few people. We're going to see that in a minute. All verse 11, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me. I, 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 I want to live in a land that is not going astray from God anymore. I'd like to pastor a church that's not going astray. I'd like to live my life where I wouldn't go astray from the Lord anymore. That the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted anymore with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord. God has one overriding intention and interest in everything that he does, and that is the, the goal of having his people be his people and having God be their God. That's what he wants more than anything. He doesn't get, he says in Ezekiel 33, he, does, he gets no joy from the death of the wicked. He wants Israel to be his people and he wants to be their God. And so what he does is always toward that end. Friend, don't ever forget that. When you see all this wickedness going on in the world, and I, I'm telling you, when the assault rifles start going off and the people start hiding out in the woods, shooting people, uh, when, when, when we see bombs going off in our when we see all these terrible things, just remember, God is trying to get Israel to be His people and He is desperately wanting to be their God. Verse 12, the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, when, not if, when the land sinneth against me by transgressing grievously, then will I stretch out, then will I, I will do it. Will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it? I'm telling you, this is thus saith the Lord. This country is headed for a terrible famine. The watchman, I'm telling you as a watchman and as a minister and a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this country is headed for a famine, people. There's going to, the store shelves are going to be empty. The government surpluses are going to be gone. No one is going to be able to eat. There is going to be a famine in this land that is going to be so grievous. Why is it happening? Because, number one, and I'll tell you, that let's look at the spiritual aspect for a minute. There already is a famine in this land. God has broke the staff of bread in this country through the King James Bible. I, I'm telling you, it is, I, I, people email me every week. Say, Pastor Mike, we started watching you. We've been watching a few months. We don't have a church to go to. We have no church to go to because they're not serving bread. They are not serving up the King James Bible. They will not do it. Pastor Mike, you're our guy. I don't tell you what, that humbles me. That humbles me. I, I, hope, I hope I live up to the expectations that a lot of you have of me. I really do. Anyway... He's going to break the staff of bread in this country. He already is in the churches. Okay, People are starving to death. And look what he says in verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, though they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. In other words, if you're thinking on, on hanging on the coattails of Mike Hoggard or anybody else, or your mom and daddy or whatever, or your church affiliations or whatever, it's not going to work. God is going to take His people and He's going to separate them out and He's going to judge the rest of the country. He did it with Sodom. He'll do it here. Noah, Daniel, and Job. I like these guys. Verse 15, if I cause noisome beasts, you know who those are? I, in fact, in America, we're one of the few countries in the world where you can go sleep out in the forest and not worry about getting eaten up or, or killed by some Wild beast. I mean, I know there's bears and a few mountain lions, but primarily, I mean, you know what we have to deal with in the state of Missouri? We have to deal with skunks, and now we've got armadillos moving up, but I've never been attacked by a rampaging armadillo. But I'm telling you, I think it's going to come a time when God is going to unleash the wild animals in this country. It is going to be a danger to live in this country. And he said... Uh, um, if I cause the noisome beast to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither their sons nor daughters. They shall only be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. God's going to desolate this land. Take a look at some of the plans that some, some people in our government have for our country. 
It's called rewilding. There is actually a deliberate plan to remove humanity from certain areas of the country. In fact, most of the country and let the, let the beast come back in. I'm telling you, this Bible's right. And God's going to let it happen. God is going to let it happen. But the idea is, is that, and I, I preached a message, and, and I want you to, if you don't have a copy of it, get it. It's called Where Dragons Live. And in the, dragons like to live within, in, the, in the wilderness, in the desolate places. Dragons do not like where people are. They just don't, they don't like it. Go, go read it. Go listen to the message. Uh, but I, I think that already in some churches and in the families of this country and in people's lives, I think the beasts are already there. You know, those foul spirits, those, those serpent spirits, those snakes, those dragons, I think they're already, I think they've already rewilded in people's lives. Verse 17, if I bring a sword upon the land, my, 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 and say, sword, go through the land that, so that I may cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither their sons nor daughters, but they, shall only, uh, they, sh they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence in that land like swine flu, but I think that there's other things. Go read Leviticus 26. I think that there's going to be other things that are going to take over in this country that is, is going to kill a lot of people in this country. If I send a pestilence in that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood, uh, that kind of leads you to think about things like Ebola or things like that, uh, hemorrhagic fevers and things like that, cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. He said in Psalm 91, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand shall fall at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. And wouldn't it be a shame if part of that 10,000 that fell at thy right hand was your own children, your own parents, your own people, your own church. Wouldn't it be a shame if that happened? Um, already we can see the pestilence in the land. Not necessarily a pestilence of people dying in the streets from the swine flu shot, um, but the pestilences of the corruption of sin in, inside people. The corruption, it is, it is, it is great in this country. There's a new story happening this week in our area. A 39-year-old woman in Illinois got on Facebook and was dirty chatting with a 13-year-old boy up in a town just north of us here, just a few miles up the road. It's where my wife uh, lived, actually, in this town. And, of course, the police immediately took over and masqueraded as this boy and she ended up meeting him, going to his house with some lingerie and other items. 39-year-old woman, mother of two. Her family and community was amazed, and so was her church. I'm telling you, the pestilences are going through this land already, people. And God's only going to save those who want to be saved. Verse 21, For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the noise and beast, and the pestilence. Go read Revelation 6. Those four things are there. Um, to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth. Both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings. And ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort. See the comfort. The word comfort is a Holy Ghost word. They shall comfort you when you shall when you see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. I'm telling you, God is such an abundantly merciful God. God is like so good to us that even when He sends the worst things imaginable to this country. Remember, all things do work together for good to them that love the Lord. And I believe that when we see these terrible things happen in this country, I believe that we're going to look at what God does after that and say, God, it was worth it. I mean, think about it. When you got saved or God brought you, I mean, literally through hell in your life, and it was terrible, and you come out on the other side, I look back on things in my life and I go, God, 
That was pretty neat what you did. You brought me out of a horrible pit. You brought me out of the miry clay. You set my feet on the rock to stay. And I believe that God is going to do that with our... Number one, He wants to do it in your life. Let Him. Number two, I believe God wants to do it in your family. Let Him do it. I believe God wants to do it in our churches. God, hey, God's in charge of Rick Warren. He is. He don't know it. Rick Warren don't know it, but God is. God's in charge of all the cults, all the false doctrines, all the new Bible. God's in charge of all the... He, God is, see, you need to understand God's doing a work here. This is how He works. He sent a famine. He sent the, the devils, the beast, in. He's sending the sword in. Remember, that strange woman, every time she opens her mouth, a sharp sword comes out. Okay, you find that in the book of Proverbs. And... Um, what else we got left? Pestilence, he's already sent this. A scourge, a, a plague of sin right through the heart of our country. And God's going to save his people out of that. And out of that, he's going to build, and I hate to use this term, but a new earth, a new, a new heaven. A, a, he's going to build a new way. And of course, I believe Jesus is going to reign during that time. But man, I tell you, wouldn't it be worth it? Wouldn't it be worth it? Give you some things to pray about this week, some things to think about. Uh, be praying for me next week. I'll be in the humongous town of Caulfield, Missouri, and uh, preaching a revival there Sunday morning through Wednesday night. Be praying for Brother Bradley here, who's going to be filling in my place, giving his testimony about how God brought him out of the Mormon church. And uh, so be praying for us. Um, when I get done preaching that revival, I'm going to take the rest of the week off. I'm not going to sit in front of a camera. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to take the week off. And uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. I'm, you know, I, pff, I take myself too seriously sometimes. But anyway, we're going to take a week off next week and then we'll be right back with it with another Watchman video broadcast. We just sent out our Watchman's packets yesterday. Uh, Bonnie and uh, Rose and Dee, ladies in our church, help us get all that together. We're sending out quite a bit now. Um, some are helping us with donations, some are not. Uh, if you can help us, uh, we appreciate it so much. I'll never beg you for money. Uh, but if you can help us, we appreciate it. If you'd like to get on our watchers list, you'll get all of our broadcasts, all of our Bible studies, Sunday morning sermons, Sunday school sermons, Wednesday night lessons we're teaching out of the book of Genesis. Uh, you get all those things, new videos that we have coming out. And uh, you get all that and uh, just call us and give us your name and address and we'll put you on the list and help us out every month. I love you and appreciate it. I have been blessed sitting here and I hope you've been blessed watching me. This is Pastor Mike, again, from our secret broadcast compound. Nobody knows where we are. Um, at 1233 American Legion Drive, Festus, Missouri. Anyway, I love you. God bless you. Have a good week. Bye-bye.